Hi, I'm Janice Vaughn, and I was asked to cover chapter 10 of our book, Into His Likeness by Edward Sree. And chapter 10 is the battle for your mind. And that's what we'll be talking about today. But first, let's open with a prayer. And this prayer is from John Henry Cardinal Newman. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May God support us all the day long till the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in mercy, may God give us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, I, um, this chapter really resonated with me, and I hope, um, I hope everyone has read it, but it is so timely right now in what it talks about. He starts out by um, telling us this is a battle. This is a real battle in this day and age for um, our thoughts, our actions, um, what we consume into our minds. And he starts out by um, giving us from Romans 12 to, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So we are bombarded today with so many, um, so much information, first of all, but it's, it's the kind of information, not only from uh, news articles, TV, movies we watch, books we might read, um, the internet, specifically the internet. We just have so, we're just bombarded with so much information. I just went through um, and pulled out a couple of headlines from different articles about the kind of stuff that we're seeing today. We have from TV Guide, it talks about the Hallmark Channel is going to include LGBTQ characters and storylines in their holiday movies starting this year. And then um, another article shows 10 times that Disney featured LGBT characters in movies and TV shows. From the Huffington Post, we don't need separate bathrooms for men and women. From the Scientific American, sex redefined. The idea of two sexes is overly simplistic. From the New York Times, Drag Queen Story Hour continues its reign at libraries despite the backlash. From the Federalist, how public schools indoctrinate kids without almost anyone noticing. And finally, from the American thinker, Christianity is under siege in America. All of these things are really timely. And, and just this morning, I read an article on a book that's being promoted called Conversations with God. And it's being promoted um, on by Oprah Winfrey and um, and many schools are using it in their curriculum. And at first blush, it sounds like, oh, well, that's a great, you know, um, uh, that's a great thing to teach kids, you know, for spirituality and about God. But when you read through it, it's, it's quite different. For example, one question of, from one of the children is, um, do, how do I confess or do I need to be sorry for, for what I've done? And the answer is, no, you've done nothing wrong. You don't need to be sorry. You know, you did not offend me because the answer comes in the form of the voice of God. You know, another one is, um, what do I do about my feelings of being a lesbian? And then the answer is, uh, you should not feel bad. You were born that way. It's in your DNA, and uh, you should celebrate your differences. So it's it's just question after question, and an 
answer after answer that A, does not comport at all with what we as Christians uh, believe. So there is a huge battle going on, um, not only with us, but with our children in the world today for their minds. And um, I was particularly, uh, this Federalist article talks about how the public schools are indoctrinating our children. Um, and just read where California's uh, curriculum is teaching um, sex education uh, down to age four and five year old kids, you know, just as they start school in uh, preschool. And um, so it, it, is, it is a real problem today. So Edward III points out in, in, in this book that, you know, we think we're, um, we go to mass, we do our prayers, we, you know, we, we think we are doing what we need to do, but then during the week after mass, we may go home and then we forget uh, to think about or to be aware of or to be con cognizant of, of what we're filling our minds with. So many TV shows on, on, a, on, on television today, um, they, they, you know, they, they totally uh, go against what, um, what we're taught as Christians, uh, particularly as Catholics. So many movies, you know, celebrate um, everything that um, we, we go against, you know, or we, we do not believe in. Uh, the news is just rife. And so when you're watching that, the internet, it's, it's all over the place. And so we have to be really, really cognizant of, of what we're doing um, for the week. And this kind of stuff, what we fill our mind with, he says, really forms our view of the world. And he uses an example of how our culture views love. And it's, it's always, what can I get out of the other person? When it should be, he says, true love is outward looking. It's about seeking what's best for another person to will the good of another. Well, that is totally 180 degree, degrees from what we see love portrayed as in our, in our media and in books, and it has caused a real problem um, in expectations for not only our, our younger generation, um, but really for everybody. They have this expectation based on what what our culture shows us as to what love should be, and it's the total antithesis of what true authentic love is. And um, he says that's why we have to be very care careful what we put into our minds. And Archbishop Charles Chaput, um, he says we need to read above all the Word of God but also history and biographies and, uh, and great minds. And so um, we, we have to be very um, cognizant of, of what we're reading and not fill it full of stuff that, that is, you know, it's of our culture, but it, it's not of God. And um, he says that in the modern era of focuses just on the world. So much of what we see, it focuses just on the world. And we can easily lose sight of the most important re realities, where we come from, where we are right now, and where we are going. And so he says that instead of focusing on what the world views as reality, we need to keep the real story in mind. And then, they, and then he cites the most beautiful truths. God, who was perfectly happy and glorious in himself, freely chose to create the universe to share his goodness and his love with others. And it talks about that he formed angels and then there were the rebellious angels and they were um, kicked out of, of heaven and they're known as demons. 
and they hate God and everything God loves. So he said, because Lucifer wants to uh, control us and 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 uh, take us away from the from the teaching of God and what what we were created to be. God sent his son to become one of us and to die on the cross and to liberate us from sin and Satan's dominion. So um, he tries every day, you know, and we, and it's, it's so in our culture today, as we all know, it's, it's story after story, TV, movie after movie, television show after television show, and, and it's, so many times it's so subtle, you know, like in the Disney movies and in the um, Hallmark uh, shows, uh, some of it is like, you know, right in your face, um, but some of it is so subtle, and it's like you don't even realize what's happening, and, and that just creeps into our mindset and what they're trying to do is they want to normalize this behavior, which, um, which of course is, is again the antithesis of who we are as Catholic Christians. And they say that um, the Father sent his spirit into our hearts and calls us to prayer, the sacraments and fellowship and to form our minds in the truth so that we can follow him as disciples and not follow the ways of the world. And this goes all the way to back to the very beginning um, of the chapter where St. Paul in, in Romans is telling them, you know, be not conformed to the world. And it said that our, that's why our work of being disciples and leading others to follow Christ is in reality the most important thing we can do. And it's a, it's a battle because um, our voices are, are being drowned out by the, you know, the counterculture and uh, all the other um, noise out there that's clamoring for people to, to hear it. So keeping these fundamental truths at the forefront of our minds, it's far more important than knowing what's on the news, what videos everyone is watching, or how our favorite team is doing. Acts 2.42 reminds us that the earliest disciples of Jesus dedicated themselves to the teachings of the apostles. They were forming their minds with all that Jesus revealed to the apostles, and it was so crucial to the original disciples that it is presented in the Bible as one of the four main principles, and it is listed first. So, um, so we recognize the battle, we recognize what we're up against. So uh, then he talks about on, you know, ways to form your mind. And of course, there's basic text that we need to start with. The first, you know, first to the Bible and of course the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And while some people may think that faith uh, is a leap in the dark, we should see these two important texts as a step into the light. As we read them and we you know, contemplate on them, they bring us into the light. Second, he says, we can take time to read good books that help us contemplate and better understand prayer, the moral life, and the mysteries of faith who God is, Jesus the church, the sacraments, and the last things. And then thirdly, we can form our minds by participating in a Bible study or a program like Encounter and other small faith formation groups at our parish. And as you know, we have Encounter, we have um, our small prayer groups, uh, started out with the rise and then it was gather. I think it might still be gather, um, but anyway. So those are the three things that we should be focusing on to form our minds. Um, the worst thing we can do, or th I don't guess it's the worst thing, but we have to um, do it in moderation 
And um, it is a huge stumbling block in our society today, and that's the internet. And that's our devices. That's looking down at your phone, that's being on the computer, that's being on your iPad or tablet. Um, it's, and we, we know that. It's been talked about over and over again about how we no longer have conversations with one another, particularly in our younger generation. Um, they don't talk to one another, they text. And um, there, there is nothing quite um, this like, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a person, being able to make eye contact, being able to, you know, them to see your gestures or whatever, um, to co actually communicate. But um, we've lost that in, um, in the age of technology. The sheer amount of time one can spend with media and its power of distraction can inhibit our intellects, keeping our minds bouncing from one thing to the next, hindering us from concentrating well, thinking clearly, contemplating truth, and hearing the voice of God. Because, and that all goes back to, as he says, that God speaks to us in silence. He doesn't speak to us in all the distractions and all the noise. Um, and we, we remember the story about um, the prophet looking for the word of God and finally hearing it, not hearing it in the wind, not hearing it in the fire, but hearing it in the stillness. He heard the voice of God. And so um, when we talk about reading a good book, um, we need more than a show or a blog or um, even Catholic, you know, media outlets. We run the risk of using these types of, um, of tools. Uh, we run the risk of just reading it. You know, something comes up and some of it, you know, you, you read and then you move on to the next one. And, um, and so we don't really form ourselves spiritually like that because the key is contemplation. He says, good books, courses, and faith formation programs can do much more to form one's mind than a show or a blog can ever hope to accomplish. But even in those, we have to be careful and make sure that we are taking the time to reflect on what we're covering and what we're learning. To understand our faith and to understand, St. Thomas Aquinas explains, it's necessary that those things that a man hears become, as it were, co-natural to him in order that they may be impressed perfectly on his mind. For this, a man needs time in which his intellect may be confirmed in what it has received by much meditation. So um, if we want the most important truths of our faith to take root in our soul, Edward C. Sri says we need to contemplate everything that we're taking in. We need to take the time to contemplate it. And then he goes on to say that we need to be honest and ask ourselves how much of our media use, even when it's Catholic media, is more about entertainment and distraction than it is about real faith formation. And he says, you know, we can consume a lot of stuff, but do we consume it primarily for entertainment or is, do we consume it to foster a thoughtful pondering of what's true in a way that leads us to an encounter with Jesus Christ, who is truth? And he ends by saying, today, the battle is also about the way we take it in and how what we do with it once we take it in. So um, he leaves us with some reflection questions. And I'll just read these if you, in case you don't have your book. He says, St. Paul writes, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. 
Again, that's Romans 12, 2. In what ways does your mind sometimes conform to the standards of this world, its view of love, beauty, and success, its pursuit of wealth, comfort, pleasures, and the praise of, of men, its tendency to focus only on visible realities and this present world? What can you do to combat these tendencies and form your mind in the truth so that you see really more clearly. And then the second one is to take a moment to examine your use of media. Are there shows, videos, songs, or images you take in that do not follow God's standards for what is true, good, pure, and beautiful? Do you spend too much time on screens with your phone and noise constantly distracting you? What can you do to build more silence into your soul to reflect on truth and hear the voice of God? So I hope you will take time to reflect on these questions. Uh, I know I myself uh, spend too much time on, on social media um, and I, I have vowed that I will, you know, limit my time because it just, it, it, A, it's a huge sucker of time, and B, it just, you know, there's, there's some good stuff on there, but the majority of it is just, uh, it, it just, it's depressing. So, so I have made a list of books um, that are just suggested reading, things that I've read and that I found very helpful. Um, as I, you know, as I go on my faith journey. Um, the first is The Mystical City of God. It's Life of the Virgin Mother of God, um, as manifested to Sister Mary of, of Jesu of Agrita. Uh, she was like in the 1600s. Um, and uh, the Blessed Mother appeared to her and told her her story. And um, it's, it's really, it's three volumes, but you can get a condensed one volume. And then there's Divine Mercy in My Soul, The Diary of the Servant of God. This is St. Faustina. And um, that's just kind of a standard, you know, uh, to help us with uh, Divine Mercy. Uh, the Fulfillment of All Desire by Ralph Martin. This talks about um, basically our desire to be closer to Jesus. And then Catholicism, A Journey to the Heart of the Faith. We did um, a study on this here in the parish, but in case you weren't able to go to that or, um, or you just want a refresher, it, it's a good book to have. Uh, then Rise, Let Us Be On Our Way. This was by St. John Paul II. He did this in 2004, and it's about the new evangelization and talks about what we can do um, to, to spread God's word. And then the last was a very interesting book. It's called The Case for Jesus. It's by Brant Petrie. He did it in 2016. And it goes um, basically through the Old Testament and uh, Old Testament readings and um, uh, history and um, uh, supporting and making the case um, for Jesus that, that he was a real, he was real. So I leave you with those, um, just a few things. There's tons more, tons more books. And I have a whole stack of books at my house waiting to be read. But um, I would like to close with a prayer. And this one is uh, from St. Teresa of Lisieux. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh my God, I ask of you for myself and for those whom I hold dear, the grace to fulfill perfectly your holy will, to accept for love of you the joys and sorrows of this passing life so that we may one day be united in heaven for all eternity. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.